Hey everyone, Archer Aviation is an interesting company. It aims to transport passengers through the air, trying to be the Uber of the skies, kind of. And I'm certainly interested in hoping for its success, given that in Los Angeles, traffic is a pain in the you-know-what, and it could benefit from air transportation, to be sure. So in this video, I'll evaluate Archer Aviation and answer if the stock is a buy, hold, or a sell, at current valuations so let's jump right into it i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now all right so some recent highlights for archer aviation and it's hoping that it can get volume manufacturing facility to be completed this year and to produce and deliver units in 2025 now their production facility could have up to 650 unit capacity for 2025 to deliver in 2025 and at roughly 5 million per aircraft that could indicate a strong revenue base for the company now it says it has an indicative order book of up to 3.5 billion but there's a lot of asterisks in there so don't get uh, enticed by this order book Remember how EV companies, well, this is also an EV company, an EV aircraft company, but remember how the EV car companies were touting their order books, and then as soon as it came time for those deliveries to be made and customers to pay, they canceled their uh, pre-orders. So for that reason, investors should be hesitant to get too excited about order books these tend to be canceled delayed paused extended etc etc they're not very reliable for what the numbers are actually going to be when the company's ready to deliver these aircraft so i mentioned already that its georgia facility is about 350,000 square feet on their 100 acre site and it could pro support production of up to 650 aircraft annually now i know they say they're on track to complete production in 2024 but it looks like their site there isn't very much going on here other than laying some concrete i don't think they've made very much progress from the pictures they show here so it would be helpful to investors if they could update us with some updated pictures of the progress on their construction sites. Now, underpinning all of their uh, construction is a focus on minimizing the capital expenditure. They continue to mature their discussions with Stellantis, a giant automaker, about a phased approach to them taking on contract manufacturing for us. So that's interesting. So instead of Archer Aviation, expending the capital to build out these production facilities they want to partner with Stellantis and have Stellantis manufacture these so the difference between those two let me uh, expand on that a little bit so if you're taking on manufacturing yourself you have to spend the money to build out the manufacturing facility but then when you produce your actual aircraft your actual unit production your cost per unit is lower because you own the manufacturing facility you're able to benefit from economies and scale and you can get your cost per unit lowered the downside of that is if you spend those billions on the manufacturing facility and your sales turn out to be much lower than expected then you're not benefiting from those economies and scale and you have all this extra manufacturing capacity that you paid for up front that you're not utilizing so it's a much riskier strategy but it also comes with higher reward potential so it's a high risk high reward strategy now when you go with outsourcing that strategy comes with lower risk because you're not spending the money up front to build the manufacturing facility you're outsourcing that to another provider and you're paying them per unit of production so they will charge you whatever price per unit you negotiate that leaves you at the risk of the manufacturer charging you higher prices than you would like and you don't have the negotiating power to negotiate those prices lower especially when you're a company like archer aviation that doesn't have other options that you can go to it's not like if stellantis 
charges a price that's too high that they can say, okay, we'll find somebody else to make these, right? There isn't any production of these types of aircraft available for uh, Archer Aviation to go around. So that leaves them at a negotiating disadvantage, but it gives them the benefit of having saving that capital expenditure up front, especially when capital is is so highly valued in the initial stages of building out a company. So I tend to like this strategy for a company like Archer Aviation that's coming out with an innovative product that doesn't generate sales yet, that's trying to conserve cash. It's already a high risk, high reward company. And so if you take one part of your business operation and you take a low, lower risk strategy in that one area, it lowers the overall risk of the company, which is something that is critical for Archer Aviation. It's such a high risk company that you want to lower your risk whenever you can. And this is one way it can lower its risk. Now, that does also decrease the upside for the company, but that's OK. That's OK. The upside is so huge for Archer Aviation that it can afford to give up some of that upside and take down some of its risk. Now, according to Morgan Stanley, the estimate is that the electrical vertical takeoff and landing eVTOL industry could quickly gain steam once it launches. And their research estimates that the market could potentially be 1.5 trillion by 2040 a $1.5 trillion market opportunity by 2040. And given that Archer Aviation along with Joby Aviation are two of the few companies aiming to capitalize on this opportunity, they're going to take some market share, a meaningful market share, which could provide huge rewards for investors. So they can afford to take off some of that upside and reduce some of their absolutely massive risk. So I mentioned to downplay some of their order book, but right now they have an order book of about 3.5 billion and that totals up to 700 aircraft worth up to 3.5 billion. They're estimating they're going to be able to sell each one of these aircraft at roughly 500, 5 million. I'm sorry, but they're, they, they want to have two business lines. They want to have one, a direct to consumer aerial ride share service like Uber in the sky. And then secondly, they want to sell their aircraft to other operators and companies like United Airlines have demonstrated interest in purchasing some of these aircraft. So two lines of business there they aim to capitalize on, hoping to gain a piece of this market through uh, those two means. And then they've already received some interest from the U.S. Air Force. So last year, they announced that they entered two new contracts with the U U.S. Air Force up to 142 million. But the U.S. Air Force has only made payments of 2 million on contracts of 142 million. So highly uncertain here, given the small, small fraction of the payments it's received up front for this contract. But it's still good news that they're getting interest from the U.S. Air Force which is understandably interested in this technology. It could be helpful, but a sm relatively small investment here from the U.S. Air Force, but good news regardless. Now, the company is trading at a market capitalization of $1.24 billion, which if you think about it has zero sales, it has, hasn't generated revenue yet. It's made some agreements, but it hasn't really generated any revenue, and it's trading at a $1.24 2 billion market cap that might look expensive but if you compare it to the potential market opportunity like morgan stanley estimated over 1 trillion then the 1.2 billion seems appropriate or seems like reasonable it just depends on the perspective now for me this type of company still in its birth phase right it's still trying to launch a product into the market generate sales. It's too early for me to apply a more than $1 billion valuation on a company like this, uh, especially with the types of contracts that it's signing with such small fraction of deposits coming in. Not very much has been proven. So I want to see a little bit more from Archer Aviation before I can recommend the stock as a buy. So for now, 
in terms of my recommendation, where would I say Archer Aviation is? I would say it's a hold or market perform. Um, I, I would put it on my watch list and keep an eye on it. I would not recommend, I wouldn't be buying it at this point. I think it's too early for me. And I would wait to see more progress from this company, which I am completely rooting for. Like I mentioned, in Los Angeles, we could definitely use some aerial transport. The traffic in this city is absurd. And so I'm really rooting for Archer Aviation to take off, so to say, here in Los Angeles. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.